What's going on everybody and welcome to the Torian and Rain Reloaded channel. If you are new, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified every time I upload a new video or go live. Also be sure to like, comment, and share my content on your various social media platforms. So today I wanted to come on here and talk about another one of these, <clears throat> excuse me, these PC individuals who is following behind, you know, major fandom none other this time than star wars now i have warned people in the past that star wars has some of the worst fans ever especially a lot of their pc fans and this what i'm about to talk to you about is going to prove just that but first let me d discuss the subject matter before i really get into what i'm going to discuss so the woman you see on your screen her name is moses ingram and she is the uh, black actress who plays Reva, or they call her third sister, on the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, which is on Disney+. Plus. Now, by the time this video goes up, I don't know if the series will already be wrapped up or if it will be towards the end because it's only a six-part limited series. So, which means it's not, as far as we know, coming back for a second season. And... She plays, you know, one of the more, you know, uh, pretty much a villain character on the show. She she wields a red lightsaber. So anyone who follows Star Wars knows when you carry that red lightsaber, you know which side you're on. You're on the dark side. And it's very rare that we get a black character who wields a lightsaber. I mean, the last time we really saw one wield a lightsaber for real, for real, was Mace Windu, played by Sam Jackson, back in, with the prequels from 99 to 2005. But then they, you know, kind of fooled us when we thought John Boyega, who played Finn, was going to be a Jedi or turn into a Jedi of some sort because they put him on the poster wielding a blue lightsaber. And he kind of wielded a little bit in The Force Awakens, but they just did his character real dirty. And I'm going to kind of talk about that a little bit in here. But she plays the character of Reva on there. She's a part of this group called the Inquisitors. And basically the Inquisitors are hunting any remaining Jedi left in the galaxy after what happened with Order 66. I'm not going to go down the whole thing. Those of you who follow the Star Wars lore know exactly what Order 66 is. But one thing I found out with her, and not so much with her, is that when she signed on to do the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, she was told by her people, by her reps, that they were gave her, pretty much gave her a warning. They said that some of these Star Wars fans are racist. Like she was warned going into this uh, that you might face some racial attacks coming your way because you are a black individual playing a role in a very PC dominated uh, saga, you know, show movies or otherwise because if you look back through history star wars is very pc heavy there's sprinkles of black people there like of course you had your um you had uh billy d williams play lando calrissian as a matter of fact the act it was a black actor who did jar jar binks his career pretty much went in the toilet after that because he faced so much backlash i'm like if you had an issue with the character of jar jar binks let it be just that don't make the actor feel bad as a matter of fact i had read somewhere that he almost committed suicide because the fandom came and attacked him like mercilessly then of course famously you had sam jackson be mace windu and it was like a fresh a breath of fresh air with a black actor wielding a lightsaber and being like a jedi master then we didn't really see anything else outside of that then you know they kind i guess it's kind of hard to gauge the ahsoka character because she's not really a human but she would in some cases for some be seen as melanated especially since now they're having rosario dawson portray her in the upcoming live action version of the series called ahsoka in which she uh appeared in uh the mandalorian uh in season two as a live action character. So a lot of people are looking forward to it. I am too, because I really like her character. She was very well written. And, you know, they had some other, you know, black characters. Then I saw said about Finn. They completely messed his character up. 
and he's been very outspoken about it. So now we fast forward to this. Oh, they also had Carl uh, Weathers in the Mandalorian as well. And now we have her character who uh, is another, in, uh, I guess, supposed to be intimidating villain type of character. So I just wanted to give you out a little bit of backstory right there. So she's playing this character, but there are some people out there that have an issue with this. And it's crazy because I, j I did a video talking again about Ryan Connell and his issues of having this black girl portray the Annabeth character in the upcoming Percy Jackson series. And how he said that the the draw up of her was supposed to be a white female with a tan and blonde hair. How is they going to just make her a black, you know, female and all this, that and the third. Well, let me pause this right quick and I'm going to show you something. Look at this right here that you see on your screen. This is a thumbnail from a YouTuber who goes by the name of Mecca random 42. As you can see, that is her right there. Her thumbnail. She is a PC woman. She has red hair. That's definitely not her natural hair color. And look at the thumbnail diversity, hire human shield operation. Get behind the darkies is real. That was her. That's just the thumbnail of the video. Now we all know that YouTube has these guideline standards and everything like that. How this managed to stay up there before she took it down herself. Cause I truly believe she took it down herself after many people went in on her. Now, I'm recording this video on May 28th, 2022. It was posted three days ago, which was May 25th, uh, 2022, which was uh, two, I'm sorry, which was three, which was two days before the show premiered because the, the show premiered May 27th, 2022. And then she titled it Obi-Wan series is going to be awful because it's hiding behind diversity again. So as you can see, it's not just the PC nerd male that always has these things to say, but it's also the PC nerd female as well. Like they work hand in hand when it comes to something like this. And again, just like with Ryan Connell at RK Outpost, when he had an issue with it being a black female who was a minor, might I add, this woman has an issue with it being a black female just happens that she's an adult. So are y'all seeing, are y'all picking up what I'm throwing down right now? I mean, it's a pattern. I mean, it, it's really self-explanatory at this point, but this was her thumbnail. This was her thumbnail and people went in on her. You can tell that it didn't get that much of reception. It only got 2.2, 2,200 views, or maybe she was hoping that it was going to get more. But then what she ended up doing was she ended up going onto her YouTube, making a video saying, <coughs> excuse me, that Disney was trying to cancel her and all types of stuff like that. And then I went into her comment section and people were saying, Disney doesn't even know who you are and no one's trying to cancel you. We're call basically people saying we're calling you out for your BS and what you put out there with this thumbnail in particular and what up because i don't even i will never know what she said in the video because she took it down but looking at this that tells me all i needed to know what she said i don't i don't have to guess that this thumbnail tells it all but then she wanted she tried to play victim that's basically what she did then after she did that video and people grilled her on that then she ended up doing a live stream further trying to make herself look like a victim and she can't even put herself in that position. You know what's so crazy? I've come across her channel before, even before this. And I would look at some of the stuff that she would talk about. And she did the same type of thing that Ryan Connell tends to always do. Mention the whole woke thing, the diversity thing, and you know this. But this thumbnail is what gra grabbed many people's attention this time. Cause she she said the silent the silent part out loud. She put it in text and then put it right there as an introductory. Cause when it comes to thumbnails, the first thing you're going to see is this. When it um, excuse me, when it comes to a video, the first thing you're going to see and recognize is the thumbnail, and that stuck out. She said the get operation get behind the darkies is real. She used the word darkies. 
if she had that much of a hang up, she could have said or put anything else on this thumbnail. But she put that there because she knew it would draw eyes. Like I said, I'll never know what she said in the video. The video is 17 minutes long or was 17 minutes long and four se 17 and four 17 minutes and four seconds long. And when people got on her about it, she then went and made another video saying that she's about to be canceled. No one's about to can. No one really cares about her. She thinks that they do. All they're doing is is holding her accountable for what she put in this thumbnail and most likely what she said in the video. Because like I said, this thumbnail pretty much lets me know right there how she felt about this actress who clearly she doesn't know. Like I said, when it came to the actress, they told her what would probably happen. And I'm willing to bet it's probably other commentators out there that might feel the same exact way. But she was bold enough to put this text on a thumbnail. Now, like I said, go back to YouTube's community guidelines. The fact that this stayed up there and she took it down with her own merit. If this was anybody else, like say if I posted something like this as, you know, as a thumbnail and let it stay up for however long. I probably would have got a strike. But she took it down with her own merit because I don't think she I don't think that she took it down or that YouTube took it down clearly because it says two. 1200 something plus views three days ago which means that thing was up for three days before she took it down then she went like i said she went now she's on uh, now currently at the time i'm recording this she's doing a live stream basically saying or uh, talking about people that's like i guess sending her threats or whatever the case may be thus pushing herself more into the victim position trying to make it seem like that she wasn't wrong you were clearly wrong the minute you made this thumbnail and put it out there. And when it comes to the thumbnails, the thumbnails usually reflect whatever it is you're talking about in the video. She says, hiding behind diversity again. Let me tell y'all something. Cold speak. Whenever they keep talking about diversity and woke, they mean this. Black. It could be a black woman, a black girl, a black man, or a black boy. That's why I tell people you got to be very careful when you talk about or very heavily critique situations like this, because if let's say, for example, if black people talk about it, for instance, like maybe have a critique of her, we're going to critique something that doesn't have anything to do with her race for the most part. When they do it, it's usually this. She can go and try to make a claim that she didn't mean what she was saying or people took it out of context, but this was not taken out of context. This was very much in your face. Now, like I said, you really can't see her face right here because I didn't put it up there, but it'll be in the thumbnail and you'll see how she looks. And trust and believe she just she, in my opinion, fits the description. But yeah. This, like I said, this this doesn't surprise me because, like I said, the Star Wars fandom, especially when it comes to the PC ones, are very staunch dub essers. Not all of them, but way too many of them. Like when they hold something near and dear to their heart, this is how the many of them act. And we as black people have to call it out, especially those who are into stuff like this. Now, I'm not immersed in into the lore of star wars i'm a fan of it but i'm not gonna lose myself in it either but you better be damn sure i'm gonna call this out and i feel many others should call it out as well and that's my take on it all right so i'm back i had to add some more additional things now keep in mind the first part that y'all heard like the first 14 minutes of this video was recorded on the 28th uh i think the 28th of april or something like that but anyway it was recorded when this story was just regulated to the internet but since then it has blown up into a lame stream media story it's literally trended all over social media on twitter like it took up almost an entire the entire list i kept saying star wars obi-wan kenobi i saw her name like it was everywhere so originally, this was going to go into my fun stories category because it was just the Internet, you know, social media based story. But since it's blown up since then, I had to move it to my main or my major stories and put it up during the week. 
And what I'm about to play for you is some audio from the actress Moses Ingram. This is actually a screenshot from her Instagram when she was making these uh this announcement. The audio is about a minute long, so I'm going to just let it go ahead and just play itself out and you'll hear what she has to say. There's nothing anybody can do about this. There's nothing anybody can do to stop this hate. And so I question my purpose is and even being here in front of you saying that this is happening. I don't really know. I don't really know. But I think the thing that bothers me is that, like, sort of this feeling that I've had inside of myself, which no one has told me, but this feeling of, like, I just got to shut up and take it. You know, I just kind of got to bear it. Um, And I'm not built like that. So (laughs) I really just wanted to come on, I think, and say thank you to the people who show up for me in the comments and the places that I'm not going to put myself. And um, to the rest of y'all, y'all weird. Okay, so that's her um, her take right there. And something tells me she was holding back on what she probably really wanted to say because that last part she said to the rest of y'all, I really thought she was going to say F you. I really thought she was going to say that because you could tell she paused a little bit before she thought about what she was going to say and just ended it off with y'all weird. Because I personally would have said F you. Me personally, I don't care how it would have looked. That would have been the perfect capping of my statement right there. I remember in the first part of this video, within the first 14 minutes of this video that I recorded, it was stated that she was told initially that she was going to face a lot of harsh criticism from a lot of these fandom weirdos, as she as she put it. Um, when it came to her taking on this role, because she's a new character, she's black, obviously. So people were going to have an issue. My thing is this, if you have an issue with her acting in the show, that's one thing. If you have an issue with how she's written, that's one thing. But once you start saying diversity hired, now I see what you're talking about or start using that word woke. And we know that they hijacked that word woke and bastardized and then flipped it and turned it on his head on its ass on its back in every which way but one into what it is now then that's when i have an issue then that's when the people see it for what it exactly is and you can't try to hide it and they do that all the time as a matter of fact if you remember this actor by the name of ahmad best and i'll understand if you never heard of him he was the actor that played jar jar binks in star wars episode one the phantom menace back in 1999 a lot of people did not like the jar jar binks character but they took their hate of the character beyond the character and started putting hate toward the actor and jar and and by the way jar jar binks was played by a black man they just had him in uh you know made up of course it was cgi but they had some parts of him that was realist like you know his height because of my best was a tall man and so was jar jar in the movies but they gave him so much hate to the point where one, he stopped acting and two, he almost committed suicide. It got that bad. It got, it got that bad. And it even, you know, uh, affected even other people, part of that cast, believe it or not, Mace Windu, of course, played by Sam Jackson. They didn't like the fact that it was a black Jedi, but you know, back then we didn't have social media, so you didn't see it. But Sam Jackson knew, I'm sure George Lucas knew, I'm sorry, everybody who worked on that crew who was a, around knew it as well. Because, you know, back then they probably sent in mail and whatever the case may be, or they may have said some things. But like I said, back then we didn't have social media, so it wasn't seen as prevalent like that. And you didn't really see it like that. It even affected some of the, I would say, the some of the non-black cast. Like, look at, uh, what's, uh, I'll use more recently, Kelly Marie Tran. She was the Asian young lady who was in the sequel trilogies, which is just bad as it is, but they gave her a lot of hate. You know, she's being, you know, she's an Asian, Asian woman and they gave her hate. They criticized her because of her size. She wasn't, you know, she didn't look like Padme or she didn't look like princess Leia, you know, who they hold in high regard. And they didn't like that either. Honestly, I really didn't care for her character because I thought she was pointless but it didn't span over into the fact, oh, I didn't like her because she's Asian or because of how she looked. I just felt like she just didn't fit because I, I just felt her character was written badly. 
They even did the same thing going back to the prequels with the uh, young kid who played Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars Episode One. You know, the, the little boy. They messed, they picked on him so much, a child, to the point where you really did not see him in anything after that, at least not to my knowledge. Because I saw him in other things before that. That was the movie that was supposed to propel him and, like, really, really push him out there. But they even came, you know, about that. Like I said, this Star Wars fandom is, like I said on Twitter, one of the most toxic fandoms of all time. And the thing is, you have fandoms in every where, especially when it comes to sci-fi. And that's the thing. They do not like, for some reason, when it when black people are somewhere inserted into sci-fi, specifically into sci-fi, where they've established the foundation of whatever it is, like Star Wars, for example. They don't like that. I wouldn't be surprised if Billy D. Williams got hate back in the day for playing Lando Calrissian. I wouldn't be surprised, because you got to think he was the only black man there. I wouldn't be surprised if even Donald Glover got hate for playing Lando Calrissian in that, uh, what was that movie that won about Han Solo? I think it was called Solo. But I didn't see it, so I can't really judge his performance because I didn't watch the movie. But it is what it is. I, I think my judgment of his character was when they tried to change his sexuality or something like that. Then that's when I had, I had a problem with that. Now, when they start doing that, then that's when I have an issue. But even then, that's not on the actor or the actress it's on the decisions that a lot of these studios make or the director whoever decides to do this like they did with eternals with the fastos character in the comics he was not a gay man he was a very heterosexual man i think he even had a wife but in this movie they made him a gay man in the academy hall g and gave him an i believe a arab husband which the people in that community boycotted the film because of, because they are very against the Academy. And then they gave them a biracial son. That was my issue. And then with them leading on that, when that happened, uh, when they started to promote the movie as, you know, Oh, the Eternals are coming out. By the way, there's going to be the first gay kiss in an in MCU. And it's going to be, you know, between this guy and this guy. I'm like, okay, you didn't have to tell us that because that's not the premise of the movie. That was just okay. And then when I watched the movie and saw it, I'm like, they hyped that up? <laughs> I think I even said it in my review. But, you know, they had to make it seem like it was this grandiose thing. That's when I have an issue with that. But it still wasn't like, oh, I'm going to hate this person because, you know, woke and diversity hiring that's what those fandom individuals over there that's what they do that's what they do then you know you have gina carano who was uh a part of the mandalorian and i think i talked about her either in videos or maybe in a live stream i can't exactly remember it was a while ago you know she said some things you know she leans politically to the right i think as many of you know and you know, a lot of people had criticisms about her, but when they found out her political leanings, then that's when they started to ease up off of her. So now they brought politics into it and now they like her. And of course, you know, she's a PC woman, too, as well, even though I think she's a PC woman of Italian descent because that last name Carano. So, yeah, and she's not a good actress herself. She just has a look that looks intimidating that fits whatever role they're doing her because the first time I saw Gina Carano was when she was in Deadpool, the first Deadpool movie. And she was in there knocking around Colossus, which just kind of blew my mind because Colossus should be extremely strong in order to take her down, if not take her out. But nobody was complaining about that. But see, like I said, apples and oranges is a night and day type of thing, but they're coming at this woman not because of what they say is bad acting or the it's a bad role or the writing for her character is bad. No, it may look like that or started off as that. But the minute that they use that word woke, they have activated their racism. They can't help it. Like I said, they have taken the word woke and they have bastardized it and turned it into something that it is not or at least not in its grand essence or its foundation, which of course we know as black people, we were the ones that started that word. woke. so anyone who has, you know, trying to figure it out, it started with us. 
And they took it and, and, and made it into what it is now. I've talked about that a couple of times on my channel. It is what it is. It's messed up that she's getting all this hate. And you know what? It, shout out to the people who work over on like Star Wars and, you know, the execs over there. I think probably maybe even Disney. I'm not sure because even some of her co-stars have come out and defended her. The actor who plays Obi-Wan Kenobi, whose name is Ewan McGregor, he has come out and he's defended her. So, yeah. Shout out to, you know, all of them over there for stepping in and stepping up and doing what they feel is, you know, is right. Because it is at the end of the day, it is messed up what they're doing to this to this woman. It's not right. It isn't. Let's just put it like call it right down the line. We we expect it. But at the end of the day, it's still messed up at the end of the day. And she's not deserving of it. She's really not. And I hope that she does get more roles. And I'm sure this is not going to discourage her. She seems like a very confident person. She seems like she's having a good time. And maybe have people thought that maybe that's just how the role is written for her to be like that. Maybe that's how she's directed at the end of the day. It's amazing that they're coming directly at her, but they're not talking or coming at the director because it's so many moving parts. She's only doing what she's being told and directed to do. But because she's the face, they're going to come at her. And because she's a black face, they're going to come at her even harder. Let's just be really and completely 100 percent honest with ourselves here when it's something like this. Like I said, John Boyega called it out. He called it out a couple years ago. He couldn't wait to get about that contract so he could really speak his mind. And when he spoke his mind, he let it rip about what was going on over there. But they're going to continue to do it because it's never going to stop. And I'm going to be honest, a lot of the people that continue to do stuff like this and say stuff like this, even though it's so blaspheming, as long as they're getting paid, they're going to continue to do it. They're no different than these goddamn grifters. A lot of them probably don't even believe half the shit that they say, just like those damn grifters over there. But hopefully I don't have to come back on here and add anything else when it comes to. Well, it looks like I spoke way too soon because on June 9th, 2022, which was a couple, a few more days after I recorded that second part, like I'm telling you, this thing is moving like a saga, much like Star Wars is. It's been announced that Reva, her character, is most likely is in the works for a spinoff Disney Plus series. So now they're about to make a whole show surrounded around her character. And I'm going to tell you why I think this is funny. First off, it's funny to me because I know the fandom is, is losing their minds over this. I already know they're, lo they're losing their heads over this right now. They probably have suffered multiple brain aneurysms off of this. But the reason why I say it's funny to me is because if they did not make such a fuss about this whole situation right here, who knows? She may or may not have received the show or maybe they was always working on a show for her, but all they did was amplify it even more. At this point, I think uh, the people over at Lucas Arts or Lucas Films are probably trolling people right now. Not saying that this is not happening and they're just putting out a fluff piece just to make people mad and riled up, but they're trolling them in the sense of, well, now we're just going to continue giving you more of what you don't want because you want it to be some whiny little tantrum throwing bitches. So here you go. So it's probably like a little, it's a, probably a trolling tactic to make them even more upset. Of course, they're going to get on their platform and they're of course going to continue to talk shit about her as a person or as as a character how much they don't like it because that's going to be content for them anyway and then i'm sure this is what many of them are going to do they're going to claim they don't like her character so much but if the show comes out watch they going they're going to end up watching it just to say talk more shit it which would hinder them because even if you watch it, you're still giving them a view, which means it's a still a rating at the same time as far as views go. So I'm like, if you don't like it, don't watch it. But something tells me, because this happens time and time again, out of curiosity, they're going to end up watching it. Even if they watch just one episode or just a few minutes of an episode, because their curiosity is going to be there. That's why I can't take many of them who are 
out there like this seriously because they do this all the time it's literally a wash rinse repeat type of deal 